Water is essential for life. That's why scientists have been searching Mars for it. We're going to look at how it moves in and out of cells, and this process is called osmosis. Let's get started. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditici.com for your free copy. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion because it involves the movement of water molecules only. And like diffusion, it still occurs down a concentration gradient, with the water moving from a dilute solution, i.e. one that has a high concentration of water molecules, to a more concentrated solution, i.e. one that has a lower concentration of water. An important part of osmosis is that it happens through a partially permeable membrane. This is a membrane that has tiny holes in it, so only very small molecules, like water, can pass through the membrane, but bigger molecules, for example sucrose, can't pass through because they get stuck. Most cell membranes are partially permeable. So, to sum up our definition of osmosis, it is the diffusion of water from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane. It is worth noting that just like diffusion, it is a passive process because it happens down a concentration gradient and therefore no extra energy is needed. Now let's take a look at osmosis in action. In which direction, in this diagram, will the net movement of water molecules be? Left to right or right to left? Pause the video and see if you can work it out. Well, to answer this question, we need to identify which side is more dilute and which is more concentrated. The dilute side is the one with the higher concentration of water molecules, which in this case is the left side of the membrane. The right side of the membrane has got less water molecules and more sucrose or solute molecules, and therefore it is the concentrated side of the membrane. So, just to recap, osmosis occurs down a concentration gradient, or from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. So this means the net movement of water is from the left side over to the right side. Eventually, the water concentration will be equal on both sides. The water molecules will continue to move back and forth across the partially permeable membrane, but there's no further net movement of water, i.e. the water is balanced on both sides. Osmosis is important in animal cells for making sure that the solutes, like glucose and salts, are at the right concentration inside the cell. This internal environment needs to be kept just right for the cell to work. The difference in concentration between the cell's internal environment and the solution outside it will determine how much osmosis occurs. We're going to look at what happens when a red blood cell is put into three solutions that have different concentrations, so you can see the impacts of this on the cell. The first one is a hypotonic solution. This means that it is more dilute than the cell's internal environment. What do you think will happen when the red blood cell is put into this solution? Pause and see if you can work it out. Well, remember that osmosis is the diffusion of water from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. So it's going to go from the hypotonic solution into the red blood cell. As the water moves into the cell, it will stretch it, and if a lot of the water moves in, the cell may even burst. This happens if there's a big difference in concentration. Of course, this kills the cell. So next up, we've got an isotonic solution. This means that it is at the same concentration as the red blood cell. Pause again and see if you can think about what will happen when the red blood cell is put into this solution. Well, nothing happens. Because the two solutions are the same, there is no net movement of water, i.e. no osmosis occurs. And finally, we've got a hypertonic solution. This means it is a lot more concentrated than the red blood cell's internal environment. Pause once more and see if you can work out what will happen in this case. Well, this time the water will move out of the red blood cell and into the beaker, as the red blood cell solution is more dilute and the water moves by osmosis to the more concentrated solution. If it's a really big difference in concentration, a lot of water will leave the cell, and this time the cell will shrink, 
And the same thing happens as when it bursts, it just won't function properly anymore. Now there is a required practical about osmosis that looks at the effect of concentration of salt or sugar on the mass of plant tissue. You'll get to apply your understanding of osmosis a lot more in this practical. Now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video, give these a go, and then press play when you're ready to go through the answers. Ready? Number one, circle the statements that apply to osmosis. So it's not any of the first two, but we can circle this one from a dilute to a more concentrated solution. And we can circle the last one, movement of water. Now in number two, we're going to go through and explain for those that we haven't circled why they're incorrect. So let's start uh, at the front with requires energy. Now this is incorrect because osmosis is a passive process, i.e. it doesn't need energy to move down a concentration gradient. Second one, movement of sucrose is incorrect because as we've just circled, it's the movement of water instead. And finally, it's not a permeable membrane that is needed, it's a partially permeable membrane. This is because the water needs to be able to get across the membrane, but the solutes like the sucrose can't. And finally three, identify the direction of the net movement of water in A and B by drawing an arrow. So the first thing we need to do here is identify which side is the dilute side and which side is the concentrated side. So here we can see the right side has got more water molecules and then osmosis will move those out to the more concentrated side. So it's right to left. For B, we'll just tally up our water molecules. We've got seven on the left and eight on the right. So the right side is more dilute and the left side is more concentrated. So the water molecules will move from the dilute solution to the more concentrated one. How did you do? In the next video, we look at the last method of moving substances in and out of cells. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below. Thanks and bye.